to talk about, I'm just telling you, th this is stuff that we are all doing to a degree. Th th there, there's none of this stuff that we can go, not me, <laughs> not me, not me, not me. Oh man, I'm killing it. No, 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 no. We're all doing all 10 of these to some degree. The key is to do it to less of a degree. Make sense? Like, like the, the key is one to 10 on these things. I, I might be doing really good and, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm only, you know, I'm, I'm only doing a little bit of it, but the, that we can eliminate some more of that and it'll take your performance to the next level. The, and so when we go through these things, just go, where am I at on that? How much of that am I doing? Because it is having an effect. See, the, the key with these things is as we do less, we, we have less drag. And if you want to build a big business, if you want to get crazy cash flow, if you want to start getting twenty thousand dollars a week deposited into your account, you've got to be high speed, low drag. So th this is all about low drag. How do we get as low a drag as possible? It's, it's we're never going to be able to perfectly do all of these things, but but what to what degree am I doing these things, and and and, and how can I do less of that so that I can move faster, perform at a higher level? All right. So these are the 10 top causes of underperformance. Um, if you've not read any of Napoleon Hill stuff, Napoleon Hill writes a ton on this subject. Um, this is a great book on a path to personal power, Napoleon Hill. It's it, it, what Napoleon Hill, for those of you that don't know his deal, Andrew Carnegie, who is one of the tycoons of, of the turn of the century of the Industrial Revolution, he, he hired Napoleon Hill to chronicle uh, his life, to chronicle what he felt were the principles of success. And so all his books are, are driven from, from that Andrew Carnegie success. And so that he writes about these, um, you know, Tony Robbins write about the same things, but the, the principles are the same. And, in the, and it applies to building a business. It also applies to your life. Like if you want your marriage to be at another level, if you want your relationship with your kids, your parenting to be at another level, if you want your physical uh, fitness to be another level, it, it applies to all that. All right, so let's get started. Number one, negotiating with the price of high performance, negotiating with the price. You, you'll hear top people that we tell, we tell you exactly what to do, right? Book 40 appointments a week. You start booking 40 appointments a week, you're going to start writing 10 grand a week. Not, not, not if, when. And, and, and so when we get in a jam is when we start negotiating with that price. Well, let me see. I could probably do it on that. We start negotiating. We start setting ourselves up for lower performance. I was trying to talk a guy through that. He's, he's just like, he's, he's, he's like, my cash flow is always tight. My cash flow is always tight. Um, well, let's talk about it. How many appointments are you running? Well, 14 or 15. Are you full time? Absolutely full time. I'm getting after it. I, I, I love you, but I need to hear, I need you to hear that that's not full time appointment. That, that you're going to stay in that gym. Does that make sense? If you go to 20 appointments, you will no longer have these problems. It, it, can, can you see how that, that can happen? It happens to all of us. We start negotiating with the price. We know what it takes, right? We, we, know, we know what high performance takes. Get up earlier than everybody else. Stay in it longer than everybody. We, we know, but when we start negotiating, you know, read every day. Oh, I read most days. Oh, operate from a calendar. We talked about calendar last week, how important that is. Well, I kind of, I kind of, see, when we start kind of, then we're only going to get kind of. Does that make sense? You can't get you can't get absolutely great stuff from kinda, and that's why it's the number one thing when you see people that struggle when you see low performers is because there's a constant negotiation with the price of success. No different than in family life. What does it take to be a great parent? You better stay up later than you think. You better get up earlier than you want to. You better do stuff you don't want to when you need to do it, right? You better have the tough conversations. You, be, you, you better set a good example. It's all that stuff. So we, we, see, we see folks that struggle in that area. It's because they negotiate with the price of success. They negotiate with the price of high performance. So we just got to zoom out and go, in what ways am I negotiating with the price of high performance? I, I, want, to, I, I want to go board member. I want to go partner. But I'm only investing a little bit into recruiting and building. Can you see the problem? Can you see the problem? I, 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 want, I want to write 10 grand a week. But I only want to run about 10 appointments a week. Let me tell you something. I, maybe Hutch can write 10 grand on 10 appointments a week. I know I can't. <laughs> <laughs> when y'all see me put in 10 grand in a week, it is not because I ran 10 appointments. <laughs> I promise you that. But, but can, can you see? So zoom out and go, what, at what, to what degree am I negotiating with success? And, and, and I'm telling you, 
if you can just give in, just give in, the results will come. It won't come immediately. It won't come immediately. And I'll tell you that that can be kind of the trick with, and not really kind of the trick. It, it is definitely the trick with staying in it. We'll, we'll run hard and the results won't necessarily show up then. So then we start negotiating again and we start dwindling down. I'm just telling you, if you commit, the results will come. The results will come because I because we can coach you through anything that's messing you up. All right, let's get going. Next one. This is a big one. And you'll hear this. Oh, my God, you hear this so much when you, when you talk to underperformers. Failure to bring our feelings under control. It, it, be, be crystal clear. Emotions are just data points. They're not directives. Emotions are data points, not directives. The, the, the vast majority of the world operates like emotions are directives. I feel this way, so I do this, right? Uh, I feel triggered in traffic, so I scream and yell at that person, right? No, 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 no. That, that, was, that was just a data point. You felt triggered. What you did next was a choice. That was a choice to allow feeling to control you versus you control feelings. Most people are slaves to their feelings. That they run their whole life just a slave to their feeling. I was I was trying to talk, trying to help a guy, help a guy with his with his business, and then it's just you know the, the the personal production piece is what's missing. He's just not he's just he's just not pouring it in like like I know he can, and it's just like I don't I just don't feel encouraged to do it. And I'm like, I, can you hear what you're saying? You're you're being a slave to your feelings instead of bringing your feelings under control. And you say, well, I'm just like that. I I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. We're all just like that. It's a choice to just let feelings and emotions be data points and not directives. And no different than in your marriage. Your spouse does something that annoys you, so you snap at them, <laughs> right? Get a little snipey with them. How's that work out? Not great. <laughs> Why do we do it? Because in that instance, we let that emotion be a directive instead of just a data point. How you feel is just a data point. What you do is a choice. So when, when you look at people that struggle, that underperform, they are, they, they're slaves to their feelings. Now you say, well, so are you just completely unfeeling? No. Remember, we all do this to some degree. The key is we've got to do them less. We've got to less often let that feeling be a directive and just go, that's a data point. That's how I feel. What do I need to do? What behavior will fix this? What behavior will get me closer to where I want to go? Let me tell you something. You will never feel your way into acting. You will always act your way into feeling. I, there, you will not find a success story where someone says, yeah, man, I was just there uh, laying on the couch doing nothing. And all of a sudden, uh, the fires of motivation stirred within me. And I decided that I was going to be a high performer. And no, it's just not how it works. <laughs> you ever been laying on the couch and go, God, all of a sudden, the, the urge to exercise is just overwhelming. No, <laughs> if we know this stuff, we just got to remind ourselves of it. We, we got to act our way into a feeling. The underperformers, they let their feelings control them. They're a slave to the, those feelings. You and I, we've got to choose to do what we're supposed to do when we're supposed to do it, despite how we feel in the moment. That, that's, that's, how, that's a key to top performance. So number two, failure to bring emotions under control. Number three, wishing instead of execution, wishing, you know, wish, wish, I wish this, I wish that, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, it's, I, I don't want to tell you, <laughs> life is not a Disney movie, when you wish upon a star, nothing much happens, <laughs> when you wish upon a star, everything's pretty much the same, <laughs> that's how that song should go, <laughs> And when you wish, you just wish it would happen. I, it, but but low performers, they wish, they wish, they wish. Here's what wishing leads to. Wishing without execution leads to frustration and complaining. Think about all the wishers you know. They always wish, I wish things were better. I wish my spouse was nicer. I wish this one. I wish I had more time. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. When there's no execution, it's a very short trip through frustration to complaining. And complaining is the least productive activity that we can engage in, or one of the least productive activities we can engage in. Nothing productive comes out of complaining, only complaining. <laughs> so 
wishing instead of execution. Don't get me wrong. Do I wish for things? Yeah, absolutely. I wish I had more time. I wish Rocky's Hot Chicken Shack made me lose weight. I wish it was a superfood. I wish, I mean, I wish that tomorrow I'd see on, on my Apple News feed that, hey, turns out scientists have discovered Rocky's Hot Chicken Shack is a superfood and you will lose weight and you will build muscle mass without exercising simply by eating their chicken wings. All, it's all you gotta do. It's the new thing. I wish that was true, right? I wish, hey, I wish broccoli tasted like melted cheese and I wish melted cheese tasted like broccoli. <laughs> I wish, see what I'm saying? We all, we all have that stuff. But what the question is, what do I need to do to get closer to where I want to go? I want to go partner. A handful of wishes isn't going to get me to partner. But a handful of changes will. A handful of execution on the right things will. But just wishing won't get you anywhere. When you wish upon a star, nothing much changes. Don't buy the hype. <laughs> Don't buy the Disney. <laughs> Don't buy the Disney lyrics. <laughs> oh, amen on the Rockies telling you man <laughs> what's the title of the book path to personal power and most of my books you will see if i've read it it's a busted up broken disaster <laughs> because i got all kinds of tabs and writing and notes and post notes all right i forgot to have the, the chat up all right all right <clears throat> let's get going here number four yielding to fear this is closely akin to being a slave to your feelings yielding to fear let me tell you something Everything good happens on the other side of fear. Everything good. I was thinking about this the other day. I was talking to, to folks that were expecting, um, and they were just talking about all the stuff that they're scared of, and I was scared about, and I was like, hey, let me tell you something. <laughs> it gets scarier, <laughs> but everything on the other side is really awesome, <laughs> right? It's, it's so awesome. It's so awesome, but it's scary. It is awesome, <laughs> Getting married to Holly. We've been married 22 years. Scary, scary decision. Why? Because I'm a forever dude. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> it's a big commitment. All my, that's all the chips to the center of the table. But it's awesome. <laughs> Does that make sense? All the awesome stuff's on the other side of scared. And, and so that's, there's no way around it. There's no way around it. But underperformers constantly yield to fear. What if, what if, what if I don't book the appointment? What if there's a no show? What if what if I have a cancellation? What if what? If, no 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 no. We we don't we don't give in to fear. We can't. We've got to give into it to fear to a less degree, right? How how how, how many of y'all have made a commitment to get in shape? And the scariest part was the first time you went to to the gym or wherever. It's like fear. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how I'm looking with my gym clothes. I don't know. We we move past that fear. We move into something awesome. This business is the same way. What if I'm not good at recruiting? I, hey, you will be. You will be. Just you got to move through that fear. The underperformers constantly given to fear, constantly given into fear. All right, number five, failure to develop the habit of initiative. Being a person of initiative is a habit. It's a habit to have initiative. You, you weren't born without initiative. You, 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 the doctor didn't run tests on you as a child and say, you have no, and this child has no initiative. They're not going to get anything done. They, if y'all maybe have a basement that y'all could turn into an apartment for this child, because they are not going to get anything done with their life. They have zero, zero initiative. No, initiative is just a habit. Initiative is a habit we develop. How can you develop the habit of initiative? It's simply just do what you're supposed to do. When you're supposed to do it. When, so, when someone says, when, when, you, when you get, when you get uh, coaching from a top producer and they say, I do this, just get in the habit of doing it. Get, get in the habit of going, how can I invest in my business to get more recruits in my business? When, when, you hear, when you hear people talk about how they build through their warm market and finding people and getting referrals and get, building their team that way, just start doing it. It's, it's, it's just a, it's a decision. But once initiative becomes a habit, you become a very powerful person. Very powerful person. Very powerful person. All right, number six. Number six thing, that, and, and this one is hard because it feels like, re, it feels like the truth. It feels, it feels real. Low performers have a habit of accepting limitations. And, and, and this, it's tricky because li the limitations that we have feel real. They feel real. Let me tell you something. Repetition is a stronger argument than truth. If you don't believe me, look at some of the insane things people say. <laughs> they just keep repeating it so it's stronger than truth. 
Repetition is stronger truth, and that's all we've done with the limitations we've come to accept. We've just repeated them so much to ourselves that we believe them to be real, but they're not real. Now, are there some limitations that are real? Yes, no matter how hard I try, I, I will not be six foot four. That I stopped growing it at this size, so that's a real limitation. We're not talking about those. We're talking about people from my background. We're talking about the area where I sell. We're talking about, well... Th those are all limitations we've come to accept. And the problem with limitations is once we use the word can't, our brain ceases to work to solve the problem. Can't is a very, very disempowering word. Very disempowering. Once we say it, once we think it, our brain stops working. It just stops working. We stop trying to solve the problem. We talked about this several weeks ago that that the, the people that win, the people that perform at a high level, they know there's a solution. That's why they're so tirelessly and working to it. Underperformers accept limitations. People where I'm from, well, based on my circumstances, I love Adam Catch. He's like, well, then get out from underneath your circumstances. <laughs> we, we said this at the Denver training, and then, and then we talked about it with a few people afterwards, and they're just like, that's crazy to think about. But it's so true. Reality is negotiable. Reality is absolutely negotiable. If you believe that, then you will stay away from accepting limitations. Again, we all do these things to some degree. The key is to do less. How do we start with our, any limitations we've accepted? When we start thinking about a limitation, the best question is, why do I believe this to be so? What was the genesis of this? In other words, when did this start? When did I start thinking this? And what can I do to change that? What can I do to change that? Limitations like I'm just a shy person. I'm just a shy person. I'm just timid. I'm just it's who I am. I'm telling you, those are things you've come to believe because they've been repeated to you by your parents. And then you started repeating it. And so you think it's true, but it's not. That I'm telling you, I'm telling you. All right. I used to think I wasn't, you know, I used to think I just, I, I'm not the kind of guy that dances at a party. Well, glad I changed that limitation. It's a lot more fun dancing with Holly. All right, let's get going. Number seven. Lack, of, this is so big, and this is a hard one to see around, but just stay with me on it. Lack of attention to the development of a pleasing personality. Lack of attention to the development of a pleasing personality. Now, be crystal clear. I love, I love this is a Jerry Seinfeld quote. He said, all men think they're funny and all women think they can decorate. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, I, I think I'm funny. Am I not funny? <laughs> I just start thinking about it. Huh, huh, huh. We all think that we have a great personality. We all think we're very middle of the road, very balanced. But, but here's the question. What's it like to be on the other side of me? What's it like to be on the other side of me? When we start thinking through that lens, we start seeing stuff we need to work on. I know one of the things I'm constantly working on it just takes forever is <laughs> my bend towards impatience. <laughs> just want it fixed already. I just want to be patient already. <laughs> it's taking too long. It's too much work. <laughs> but I have to work to bridle that. I love when people say, Stephen, you're so patient. I'm like, it's working. It's working. It's working. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> just start counting, buddy. Um, and and, and here, here's... Here's why that question is so powerful, because with one small exception, the world is made up of other people and perception is reality. Meaning what someone perceives us to be is their reality. And that's why you'll see folks that they, they bring in a bunch of people, but then there's like nobody's producing on their team. Nobody's growing on their team. Nobody's sticking around. That's typically a personality problem. It's typically a personality problem. Something about them rubs people the wrong way. And that's, that's especially the case in recruiting. Because if we create one feel when we're recruiting, in other words, I'm going to empower you, I'm going to help you. But then we create a different feel once they're in, we lose trust. We lose trust. Is my feel consistent? And that's all about developing a pleasing personality. How, how, how do I fix the parts of my personality that rub people the wrong way? Just do the right behavior until it starts to stick. <laughs> it 
some of them are going to be a bigger battle for you than others. I know there's parts of my personality I'm constantly working on, constantly working on. It's a constant battle. But but failure to develop. You see low performers, they, they, they're, here's what they lack. They lack awareness. They lack awareness. They don't know that to the rest of the world, they're completely, they look completely conceited and into themselves. It just doesn't occur to them. Does it make sense? And let me tell you, if, if, if I'm all about me, there's not room for you. And that's just one example of, of something that rubs people the wrong way. But, but, but lack of attention to, to working to develop that pleasing personality. It's a constant, it's a constant, constant thing. All right. That's right, Jeremika. Is my feel consistent? When you see people, and, I say, and I, we could, I could teach on that for a, a, another half hour, but it's the same thing with clients. Agents that have big chargebacks, agents that struggle with that. I was got, they got a, me and Andy got a text from a guy that said, I'm, I'm out of the field until I figure this out because the chargebacks here are crazy. And I'm like, chargebacks here are not crazy. <laughs> Your chargebacks might be crazy, but all them policies have one thing in common. You, does that make sense? You, that, that's, you, that's the commonality all those people had in common. And it, that's typically a feel problem. The, the, the one feel was created, oh, I'm dedicated, I'm here to help. And, and then another feel is created when we don't return calls to clients or other things. Does that make sense? The feel being consistent is so key in creating trust. We don't have time to get further into that. All right, we, only, we got three left and I only got one minute. Let's get going. Number eight, habit of procrastination. The busiest day of the world, the busiest day of the year for underperformers is always tomorrow because that's when they're going to do everything. That's when they're going to start all the changes. That's when they're going to finally do this. It's tomorrow. The problem is <laughs> tomorrow becomes tomorrow. And then tomorrow's tomorrow becomes tomorrow. A habit of procrastination, habit of procrastination. How, how, how do we fix that? We just got to go the other way. And that ties closely in with the initiative thing. A lot of these are tied together, right? Um, habit of procrastination kills. I mean, it just kills us. One of the easiest ways to do this is just write should at the top of a paper, S-H-O-U-L-D, and then just start making bullet points, stuff that we know we should do that we haven't done yet, and just start knocking them out one at a time. Don't get overwhelmed. <laughs> Steve, I, I made a should list and it was 4,000 things. Okay, just do one, just do one, then do the next. Do one, do the next. Calm down. Breathe, dog. Just do one at a time. You'll be all right. You'll get there. All right, number nine. This is big. Poor association choices. Underperformers, whether it's in business or in life, they're very casual about who their friends are. Their friends just become the people that are closest around them. High performers in every area of life are very on purpose with their friendships, very on purpose. They pick who they're going to be friends with. They have qualifiers for, the, for you to be their friend. I'm 100% that way. I know what I want to get done in my family life. I know what I want to get done in my business life. So there are people that I just cannot be close friends with. Why? Because they're going to influence me the wrong way. The, the, the power of association, you cannot beat it. People have been trying to beat it for centuries. <laughs> you can't beat it. You can't beat it. Napoleon Hill talks about that so much, man. He talks, he talks about that, the, how it just squeezes and it makes you, you can't get around it. He says, take the five people that you're closest to, take their income, average it out, and that'd be right where you're at. It's, you do the same thing with, hey, take the five people you're closest to, how happy are their relationships? That's about where you're going to be at. Why? Because we cannot beat it. You can't beat it. Low performers, they're just casual about it. And they're friends with whoever happens to drift into their life. High performers are very on purpose with who they're friends with, who they're close friends with, and they, they are very clear about what they want and don't want, and that drives their association choices. All right, number 10, this is the last one, we're going we're gonna to get out of here and get rocking again, is, is lack of faith. And, 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 and this is one of those things where if you believe that what you're doing will get you where you want to go, you will do it with the spirit of service that it takes to make it work. If you 100% believe if I make this number of dials and book this amount of appointments because of everything I'm seeing other people do, I know I will get to this. I had Jeremiko helping out one of my buddies with his phone script. If, if I just make enough phone calls and say it just like this, I will get enough appointments to get to. You've got to have that faith because otherwise we won't do it with the spirit of service to make it work. And what's that called? Going through the motions. I know we got a lot of football fans, right? The wrong play call, run, 
like it's the best play call will get better results than the perfect play call run with lack of enthusiasm. I guess so. That's what coach said. Let's, let's see how this goes. All right. All right. Here we go. That's not going to work. <laughs> Dude, this is the play. This is the play. Yeah, I love, um, I saw the clip of uh, the end of the game last night with Lamar Jackson. That joker believed that he was going to get in the end zone. <laughs> I mean, if there was a brick wall, he would have run through it to get there because he believed. I mean, faith is such a key thing because it, that when we believe it'll work, we'll give it the spirit of service. We won't just go through the motions. Now, I see that when, when, when we're trying to help a couple in their relationship and it's like they're doing the things we're coaching them to do, but they're not doing it with the spirit of service to make it work. <laughs> The, the spirit of service is so tied to belief that it will work, that it creates the work. I mean, it, it, I'm saying, it's crazy the, the link there, but I'm telling you, low performers, they just, they don't believe. They don't believe that that's, they don't believe that. That's why you hear low performers nitpick and, and constantly go, well, I don't know about all that. I don't, because uh, they don't have the faith that if they just do it, it will work. Success is very simple. It's just a matter of imitating the behaviors of successful people, but you've got to believe that those behaviors work. Otherwise, we won't do it in the spirit of service it takes to make it work. I could go all day on that subject, but I'm telling you, when you read books like that, uh, when you read books like Tony Robbins, when you read that and, and you look at when they talk about what holds people back is, the, is those 10 things or a flavor of those 10 things. But I'm telling you, what, what, what you and I got to do, what, what we got to do to get to that next level is just constantly look at ourselves and go, we got to do less of that. I got to do less of that. All right, let's move. Let's, let's move towards less of those things to pick up the performance. Guys, Holly and I love you. We want you to win more than you can possibly imagine. We are in the run. Right now, what we do over the, the, this final quarter of the year will have everything to do with what we get done in 2022. I see it every year. Low performers limp in to the new year barely limp into the new year. High performers go crazy October, November, December. They go absolutely crazy. And so they come into the next year absolutely on fire. The people that make the biggest moves will be those that just squeeze everything out of this fourth quarter. Guys, Holland, I love you. Let's get out. Let's get after it.